This is Alexandra George. I'm here with Inside Ambition, and today we're talking to Christina Tessero. She runs the pop-up gardens for the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society, and she's going to talk about a project they're working on at Drexel. Hi, Christina. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. So why don't we start uh, with you just telling us a little bit about what PHS is? Uh, so Pennsylvania Horticultural Society is coming up on its 200th anniversary. Wow. In 1827, it was founded uh, by a number of Philadelphians. And then in 1829, uh, they got together and did the first flower show. Uh, and that's actually what most people know us for is the flower show. It happens every year, it brings around 250,000 people from surrounding areas. Um, but we have a wide variety of programs that focus on greening in all forms. So we have a tree initiative, uh, tree tenders and plant 1 million. Um, we have land care, which is part of our healthy neighborhoods. Um, land care manages 12,000 vacant lots within Philadelphia, uh, cleaning, greening, stabilizing, um, they also train a workforce development, folks coming out of the prison system, mm -hmm. um, giving them a landscape training, um, and then connect them with landscape uh, crews that do the stabilization of the vacant lots. We do community gardens, we have pop-up gardens, we, um, we, we do a lot. Okay. Yeah. Um, so why... What is PHS doing at Drexel with the Firestone Garden? Well, as you may or may not know, uh, we partnered with Drexel and Wex Wexford Science and Technology uh, the past three years to activate the site at the corner of 36 and Filbert, which is a corner of the larger parcel that's now under construction um, where we tried to you know, really bring awareness to that corner in what is going to be the future of a very big uh, conglomerate of different activities with the school and, you know, health buildings. And when that started to close down, Drexel approached me about the Firestone site that they had acquired a few years ago and similar desire of activating it in a way that, um, Originally was focused in food and beverage, but when I took a look at the site um, with a few insider Drexel uh, people mm -hmm. um, and their opinions, I really, it came, it became very apparent that uh, the school was wanting and in need of a communal, multifunctional space that mm -hmm. could be harmonized with plant material. Um, so when we were writing this proposal to Drexel, um, it, the, it became knowledge that this was a project from President John Fry. I actually got to meet him at the flower show when we did the press conference, but this has really been his project uh, for a number of years after acquiring the building to just activate this in a way that's really meaningful to the student body. So I just wanted to say thank you to President Fry for um, pushing forward this initiative. We're really excited. Yeah, it sounds like a really great idea. And this space is right in front of one of our major like living areas at University Crossings. Uh, so could you talk a little bit about what the space will actually look like or what the plan for the space is going to be physically? Sure. So we're occupying just the exterior um, with a wonderfully planted garden. The interior is uh, maybe in the future, maybe something else will happen. So we're really just focusing on what was the parking lot of the uh, Firestone building. And we aren't doing any like major construction. We're really just planting raised beds and um, making it again, multifunctional. So the idea is that uh, food trucks could come down JFK and uh, two of them could sit on the JFK side mm -hmm. of the property. Then uh, there would be tables and chairs in front of the garages with a, an area that, could be um, 
seats at one point, but is also outfitted as a stage. So it could host impromptu performances or really act as this um, space for theater and music and, you know, comedy, whatever the student body wanted to use it as. And then um, there will also be another, like on the other side uh, where there's the Drexel sign on the other side of the lane because mm-hmm. you walk away, really embellish that as well. So the whole thing feels like a garden. So we're really going to build up with planters that have seats on them um, and hopefully some outlets throughout the entire area so that you can sit there with your computer um, in this, you know, beautiful garden that uh, really can take you outside of the city. With designing this uh, garden, there were two pretty important things that we wanted to highlight, which was uh, when you're walking down Lancaster Walk towards the Frank Furness building, so the Firestone site would be on your left, uh, we really wanted to make sure that the Furness building was in clear view. It's one of your highlights throughout campus, so not blocking them mm-hmm. whatsoever. And that when we started, you know, speaking to people in the Drexel community um, and the student body, they really liked the uh, kind of modern or retro modern look of the Firestone building itself. So we really didn't want to touch anything. We just wanted to embellish it Mm -hmm. with the exterior garden design. So having those two unique buildings right close to each other and, and People don't really see the Firestone site, so we really wanted to just, like, it make it look cool yeah. and not, like, an, you know, unused building. Mm-hmm. That it just sounds so beautiful just imagining it all. <laughs> uh, and then the other idea, which we're still working on, is uh, part of where the tables and chairs are. We would like to work with um, your dining facilities and the folks that you you have a, a CSA program and a farm share stand that sometimes happens in the summer and potentially moving that uh, to be moving one of those to be part of it and have a weekly farmer's market that would sell fresh fruit, fruit, produce, um, potentially some local beverages. Uh, in PA, you're able to sell local Pennsylvania breweries and distilleries can sell their products closed container. Um, so we're, we would like to connect the student body and the faculty with more local options. Yeah, I think that that's a really great idea. Sometimes Drexel can feel like it's its own little bubble outside of Philadelphia. Um, yeah. So you also mentioned that PHS does a lot of programming. So outside of the programming that would just be facilitated by Drexel and its students and faculty. Uh, Can you foresee any PHS programming being brought to that space and what would that look like? Absolutely. That's uh, another major part of the proposal that I forgot to mention. So thank you. Uh, I personally will be bringing programs to the site where it's everything from a plant swap to um, succulent plantings in a little you know, container that you can have in your dorm room, very focused for understanding the confined spaces that uh, the students are living in. So houseplant focused for sure. Um, We could do all sorts of things. Um, There's uh, some crafting workshops, macrame workshops. Uh, I, I proposed a whole list of different horticulturally based fun activities to Drexel and when we get to the point where we could be closer to that, we'll involve the student body and sort of pull them on what you'd like to see. There'll probably be caps to it because I can't yeah. obviously <laughs> have everyone in all at once. Yeah. Uh, so you'll probably have to watch through the uh, Drexel channels when the programming will happen. You'll probably need to register just so we can make sure that we get you signed up. Probably. And what would pricing look like for students? I try and keep it pretty minimal. So. Things like plant swaps are free, so you can propagate what the plant that you're sitting right next to, you can take a little leaf, put it in a, in some water and, you know, you could come with that 
for the free plant swap. Um, and then the other ones, I try and keep around $10. That's awesome. Um, they go up to 20 but again, it depends on what we would agree upon mm -hmm. with the student body. But try and keep it cheap. That's awesome. Great for college students. Yeah. Okay, and last question for you. I know that the original end date for this project was supposed to be sometime early May, something like that. Um, based on the world right now, do you guys have any plan of when production is going to take place or any idea? What does that look like right now? So our original plan was to have it completed uh, installation the this coming week, two weeks, May 5th. Um, unfortunately, that is not happening. Um, and while we remain in conversations with uh, Drexel, the, the staff and everybody that we've been working with are amazing. Obviously, things have changed, and we hope that the project is still moving forward. There's a lot of things that are at play. I'd say best case scenario is maybe it could be installed later this summer and then open for the student body in the fall. But if there is no student body coming back this fall, that's up for discussion. And we may just put the project on hold until we have a better sense that the students will be there to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And how long does production take? And, produ and the garden can be utilized in any season, right? It doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah, we do seasonal change-outs that include winter activation. Obviously, if it's like five degrees, nobody's really going <laughs> to want to sit out there, but it'll look, um, it won't look barren by any means. It'll have some really interesting plant material chosen for the winter season. And the idea is that it's it's open. It's, it's called the Gateway Garden Brought to Life by PHS. So we uh, maintain it, but it's yours. And... That also does mean that the average person could potentially walk by and sit down and enjoy it themselves. Um, the idea is that we would work with the Drexel staff uh, to be able to reserve certain sections. So if you wanted to have a performance, you could speak to the person I can't remember <laughs> and, uh, and reserve it. And then I would have a hold on programming coming this day so that you know that you couldn't reserve it at mm -hmm. that actual time frame but um it really is for everyone and so uh it's not going to take very long for us to build uh it's really and plant material is already procured we already have it growing so i mean if we got the the green light it would be a matter of a few weeks before it could be up and running it's it's just watching what happens in the world today. And really, is there going to be a student body coming back in the fall for mm -hmm. Well, that all sounds very promising. And it's nice to have something to look forward to when we are back on campus. Um, so thank you so much for talking with me today. I know a lot of students are going to be really excited to hear about this garden. I, I hope so. And uh, we really want to open the lines of communication to your student body to know that PHS is here as a resource for you. So even if it's not, um, you know, sitting in the garden and enjoying it, knowing that PHS exists and that we have plenty of programs that might be interesting for you in your regular life. So we're, we're excited to continue our work with Drexel. Thank you. Thank you.